So, I shall be discussing about uh, principal components which probably many of you are aware of, but uh, in order to complete the things and as well as this uh, probably I will try to give I mean uh, a different way of looking at principal components. I think all of you may be knowing what a covariance matrix is. If you have a vector x, then its covariance matrix, covariance matrix which are represented by sigma and suppose this vector x has here I, I am changing the notation slightly here say it has capital D dimensional vector let us just say then this matrix is going to be basically covariance of the first variable with itself covariance of x 1 with x 2 and covariance of x 1 with x d then covariance of x 2 with x 1 covariance of x 2 with x 2, covariance of x 2 with x d, then in the last row covariance of x d with x 1, covariance of x d with x 2, covariance of x d with x d, where this vector x curl is actually x 1 to x d. <coughs> then this is the covariance matrix which is a capital D by capital D matrix, which is a capital D by capital D matrix. Um, <coughs> till now when we are talking about feature selection, we had a criterion function criterion function is defined based upon some I mean some particular characteristics which we believe that the features should possess. Now, in this principal components here we are not going to talk about classification. Here what we are going to do is we are given some capital D number of features we would like to see somehow where you have more I should say variance. The places where you have more variance you are seemingly going to get I should say um, more variance provides there more of an idea about that particular variable or that particular I should say combination of variables. Basically you look at a data set like this, say here you have two variables. and you have a data set. The variable x 1 has some variance and the variable x 2 also has some variance, okay. but probably if you take a linear combination and uh, if the linear combination provides something like this, this may have more variance than this or than this. Am I correct? Basically in principal components this is what we are trying to get that is let me explain it. You have totally capital D number of dimensions, there were number of dimensions is capital D. Then what we will see is that in this capital D number of dimensions, number of dimensions is finite, 
we are we would like to look at all possible directions. For example, here how many directions are there you have this direction you have this you have this like this you have directions right. So, basically your directions are 0 to uncountably many directions. uncountably many directions you are going to have. Then we would like to find out that direction where it provides maximum variance. What is the meaning of providing maximum variance? The meaning of providing maximum variance is the following. So, this is your data set. My direction is say, let us just say this axis my first direction. Then you take the projection of each point onto this, you take the projection of each point onto this. So, this point when it is projected it falls here, then you measure this length which is basically because this is already the x axis which is basically the x coordinate right. So, if it is this axis you are basically going to get the x coordinate values of each one of the points, but if it is not this axis let us just say an axis like this. This one then what are you going to do? You take the projections and each one you measure the distance from the origin. You measure the distance from the origin. Okay you measure the distance from the origin, they will be the projected points the if when this point is projected onto this then the corresponding value is going to be the distance from the origin to this one okay. and similarly for this point the distance from the origin to this and something is positive another one is negative. Here they are some are this is negative and this is positive right. If you are taking this as your positive side of axis this as your negative side then from here to here you are going to get negative distance from here to here you are going to get positive distance. So, the corresponding values are going to be that. Okay. So, for any such direction say this is your direction, then this point is projected here, this is projected here then you take this thing. So, you take a direction and project the points on to that direction. So, then you will get single dimensional values for each of these points then you can calculate the variance of this. Are you understanding what I am trying to say? You can calculate variance. So, for each direction you will get a value of the variance. Now, you find out that direction for which the variance is maximum. Find out that direction where the variance is maximum. Okay. How to find it out I will come to it later say suppose you have found it, then you store the direction. Now, look at all its perpendicular directions, look at all its perpendicular directions. Now, among them 
find the direction with maximum variance, then you have two directions. Now, look at all of all the all the directions perpendicular to these two directions, all the directions perpendicular to these two directions, then among them find the one which has the maximum variance. Like that you just go on and on and on doing it. When you come to the last one that means, from d you will find 1, 2, 3 up to say d minus 1. You have found d minus 1 directions always. I mean you say you have found somehow d minus 1 directions. Then the dth direction is uniquely def defined. Is it uniquely defined? There are totally capital N orthogonal directions sorry capital D orthogonal directions. You have already found d minus 1 orthogonal directions. So, capital Dth 1 is uniquely defined okay. and there also you project the points on to that then you get the variance. Okay. So, now for each one of the points in this suppose one point is let us just say y it is a capital D dimensional point. Then corresponding to the first direction that is the one with maximal variance you will get the corresponding coordinate value to that corresponding to the second direction for this point you will get a value to that like that corresponding to all these chosen d directions you will get a value. So, that is the transformed value of this vector y from the old set of axis that you are given to new set of axis. We are basically going to get a new set of axis is it correct because all these are perpendicular directions and you have an origin and all these are perpendicular directions. So, you are basically going to get a new set of axis right. These directions are called the components if you want to get small d number of components, then 1, 2, 3 up to this small d you have to take. They will be your small d components, they are called principal components and there is also another term associated with this. this comes from electrical engineering. Do you have any any one of your background in electrical engineering? Karhonen low this is discrete Karhonen low expansion, this is discrete Karhonen low expansion. <coughs> so, why the variance is given importance? Variance is given importance because variance will tell you where you have the more variation in the data set and you do not want to lose the information on variances. So, if you have to represent the whole data set by a single component and you are choosing that principle that component with maximum variance. That is why each time you are looking at the maximal variances. Okay. Now, now, the next question is how do you calculate? This is the basic principle, but then it looks to be extremely complicated. You have to take a direction for which you have the maximal variance and then you take the perpendicular direction of you consider all the perpendicular directions to this chosen direction again find the one with maximal variance. This seems to be a very highly cumbersome process. So, there is a simple way of doing it that simple way is you take the covariance matrix 
of this vector from which you have got all these observations and find its eigen values and eigen vectors find and write down the eigen vectors eigen values in decreasing order that is Now, there is a very basic question here. I just said write down the Eigen values in decreasing order. What happens if an Eigen value becomes a complex number? Can I write it in decreasing order? After all this is a matrix square matrix variance covariance matrix is a square matrix. For every square matrix you can calculate Eigen values and Eigen vectors and it is not necessarily true that Eigen values will be real. They can be complex numbers also. If they are complex numbers, you cannot write down the Eigen values in decreasing order or say something like that. Right? Now, my question is that is it possible that for a covariance matrix, the Eigen values are complex numbers? The answer is no. For a covariance matrix, Eigen values can never be complex. Why? Covariance matrix satisfies several properties. One of the properties is covariance matrix is a positive semi definite matrix or non negative definite matrix. Positive semi definite or non negative definite they mean the same thing, it is if I write, write down the covariance matrix as sigma, then a prime sigma a is greater than or equal to 0 for all a. If it is greater than or equal to 0 for all a not is equal to 0 vector, here equality is introduced, then this matrix is said to be positive semi definite or non negative definite. Non negative means it is not negative that means it can be 0 or it can be greater than 0. Non negative is same as positive semi definite. Positive means strictly greater than 0, semi means you are in including 0. Okay. So, then sigma is said to be non negative definite matrix or a positive semi definite matrix and for a positive semi definite matrix the Eigen values and uh, <coughs> this matrix is also symmetric. Sigma is a symmetric matrix and positive semi definite matrix, then the Eigen values they are not only real, they have to be also strictly greater than or equal to 0. This is a I mean this is a proven statement in from matrix algebra. Now, for in for sigma the Eigen values are not only real, but they are also strictly greater than or equal to 0. That happens because for a positive semi definite matrix the determinant is can you tell me what the determinant will be? The determinant is actually for these matrices, it is product of the Eigen values. The determinant is product of the Eigen values. So, if the equality holds, then there is at least one Eigen value which is equal to 0, then that means the determinant is also equal to 0. There is at least one Eigen value which is equal to 0 that means the determinant is also equal to 0. Usually the covariance matrices are positive definite that is usually they satisfy this. Usually they satisfy this 
and if they satisfy this then this is true. then that is true that means all the eigen values will be strictly greater than 0. <coughs> okay. Now, right. Um, Let me ask you a question. Corresponding to an Eigen value, how many different Eigen vectors can you have? We generally write corresponding to this Eigen value, you have this Eigen vector. Okay. My question to you is, how many different Eigen vectors you can have corresponding to a single Eigen value. Do you have a unique Eigen vector? Unique in the sense of the magnitude and the direction both have to be same or the direction is same the magnitudes are different. Can you say anything about it? Direction is same magnitude is different right. That means, suppose for the matrix sigma Suppose, lambda 1 is an Eigen value, then sigma x say Eigen, okay. so x is an Eigen vector. So, sigma x is equal to lambda 1 x and suppose I take some constant c times x, then sigma of constant c times x is equal to c times sigma x, this is c times lambda 1 x which is lambda 1 times c x. Right. So, that means, corresponding to an Eigen value, you are going to get vectors the same direction, but different magnitude. Okay. Now, suppose two Eigen values are same. Okay. Before that, let us just see. Uh, Suppose all the Eigen values are different, then can you say anything about the corresponding Eigen vectors? Suppose all the Eigen values are different, then can you say anything about the corresponding Eigen vectors? Here what is the meaning of corresponding Eigen vectors? I take only those vectors with magnitude as 1. I take only those vectors with magnitude as 1. So, corresponding to an Eigen value, you are going to get basically two Eigen vectors, since you are going to take square root, okay, minus 1 whole square is 1 and 1 whole square is also 1. Right? So, plus I mean in two different directions you are, I mean it is the same thing in the same axis. Okay. So, you might get two Eigen vectors with magnitude as 1, but you take any one of them no problem. Similarly, for lambda 2 you take one such Eigen vector. So, for lambda d capital D also you are going to take one such Eigen vector. My assumption is all these lambdas are different. Then what can you say about the corresponding Eigen vectors? Do you have an answer? If Eigen vectors are if I call them a 1, a 2, a d, then a i prime a j is equal to 1, if i is equal to j. If i is equal to j, you are going to get a i prime a i, which is actually the magnitude, right? square of the magnitude that is equal to 1. But A 
if two eigenvalues are different here I am assuming all the eigenvalues are to be different then the corresponding eigenvectors they satisfy this property that means they are orthogonal they are orthogonal am I right a i prime a j is equal to 0 when i is not is equal to j and a i prime a j is equal to 1 if i is equal to j. So, if all the eigen if the if no two eigen values are same that means, if all the eigen values are different this property is satisfied, but if two eigen values are same can you say anything about eigen vectors. The eigen vectors first you are going to have several problems about eigen vectors. This is identity matrix. What are the eigen values of this matrix? This is identity matrix. What are the eigen values of this matrix? They are 1 and 1, they are same. Every vector is an eigen, eigen vector, right. Am I correct? So, if eigenvalues are same, then this sort of property may not hold. Are you understanding? If eigenvalues are same, this property may not hold, but if eigen if all the eigenvalues are different, that means no two are same, then Eigen vectors are orthogonal, and uh, now you try to remember what I told you in the very beginning. I said that you somehow find a direction, now find all the directions perpendicular to that. So, each vector is perpendicular to all the others. Am I correct? Every if all the eigen values are different, then eigen vector every eigen vector is perpendicular to all the other vectors because of this ok. Now, if you take the first eigen vector a 1 corresponding to this I said that you should get a real number. What is that real number? That real number is a 1 prime for that particular x you remember this diagram uh, say this is the direction for this one you should take this for this you should take this again for this these are the values. So, for a particular vector x the corresponding value is this corresponding to a 1, corresponding to a 2 the corresponding value is this, corresponding to a d the corresponding corresponding to a d the value is this a d prime x. These are the project projected values and I was talking about variance the variance of all these values is actually for a 1 it is lambda 1, for a 2 it is lambda 2, for a d it is lambda d. That is 
if I have to write it in mathematics variance of a i prime x is equal to i th 1 it is lambda i variance of a i prime x is equal to lambda i. So, these are all the eigen values and eigen vectors of this variance covariance matrix. So, the eigen values are going to give you the variances in those directions and eigen vectors will provide you the directions. Since, we are trying to look at the one with maximal variance. So, you take the eigen value which is the maximum and corresponding to this you find eigen vector this is your first component then I am assuming that the second one is strictly less than the first one the second eigen value is strictly less than the first one then I get a 2 this is your second eigen vector. So, this corresponds to the second component now you take this and up to you take d lambda small d and corresponding to this you have the direction a d and uh, your small d these are your d principal components. these are your small d principal components and the corresponding variances are lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda d. The corresponding variances are lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda d. In fact, principal component analysis it is used extensively because of these properties that I told you and there is also another property. Since, I have been talking about variances is there any connection between these values and this diagonal. Note that every diagonal element is a variance term this is variance x 1 this is variance x 2 this is variance x d. So, is there any connection between these diagonal elements and those lambda 1 to lambda d's? the answer is yes there is a connection. What is the connection? The connection is sum of the variances this is the trace of the matrix sigma trace of sigma. I hope you all remember the meaning of the word trace, trace is the sum of the diagonal elements the main diagonal elements this is nothing but I want you to check these things. I want you to check this I am not giving you any proofs for these things, but please check it summation i is equal to 1 to capital D of lambda i that means, we are just summing up all the variances that we have got this is nothing but summation i is equal to 1 to D of variance of x i's. So, basically what we are trying to do here this variance of x i's the sum of variance of x i's we are trying to make a partition where somehow we are just trying to keep the information about the larger variances and we are removing those things with smaller variances. And now what is the meaning of this? This is a linear combination of the original variables right a 1 prime x it is a linear combination of the original variables 
original variables are x1 capital x1 capital x2 capital xd and this is a linear combination of that we have taken here small d such linear combinations originally what we have is capital d such linear combinations that is the original setup where you have capital d such linear combinations and these are all orthogonal to each other we have taken small d of them corresponding to the larger variances and the other capital D minus small d they correspond to smaller variances and uh, if the variance is small and if we remove those things would it create a problem or I would like to ask the question in another way variance is small how is it going to help you? Can you tell me? If the variance is small, we can replace all the values by the corresponding means. Are you understanding? By the corresponding means, because since the variance is small, from the mean the distance will be very, very small. So, we can actually replace the values by the corresponding means. So, in that way, we are losing some information. I am not saying that we are not going to lose any information, but the information loss is small. So, when the variance is small you can replace the values by the corresponding means. Okay. So, by keeping the larger variances and removing those things which smaller variances yes we are losing some information I am not uh, denying that since the variances are small if we replace by the mean yes there will be some information loss, but it is not really that much. Okay. It is not really that much and the information loss or the loss in this procedure is actually measured by this. The loss in this procedure is actually measured by this. And uh, some people may do this also, that means may, some people may take this ratio also. You can measure the loss either by this quantity or this divided by this the ratio. <coughs> okay and uh, so that whole theory that I was mentioning that can be easily done by looking at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. Um, there is a theorem and proof for this relationship between those directions and the covariance matrix eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix that is generally available in many pattern recognition books. It is also available in many electrical engineering books and I will not go into the details of that. I will not go into the details of the proof of these statements. If the people whosoever is interested in these things they can always go through the corresponding proofs in the books and that they can find very easily. Okay. And uh, this is really a popular procedure because of all these properties that I mentioned, because of all these properties that I mentioned and it is used vast at just too many too many places it is used, just too many places where principal components is used. <coughs> this also resulted in I mean in fact usually computer scientists or statisticians they have to go through this eigenvalues and eigenvectors because of principal components. That is one of the reasons 
why statisticians or computer scientists they have to go through the literature on eigenvalues and eigenvectors because of this principal components and because of those wonderful properties of I mean the covariance matrix. And uh, when you see that there is a division that takes place the summation variance x i is same as summation i is equal to 1 to d lambda i this is a very strong property this is a very strong property and uh, so it just divides partitions it and uh, that is very nice you see that is very very nice and uh, <coughs> there is a pca lda about which dr sukhend das anyway he will teach okay and uh, there are many other variations of PCA which are used at many many places and uh, about one of them I shall take a lecture probably tomorrow okay, where that is PCAs are used for feature clustering where principal components are used for feature clustering. In fact, PCS have been in use at I mean several several places. One of the recent works is regarding um, principal components for sparse matrices. A sparse matrix is a matrix where you have more zero elements than non zeros. you have more zero elements than non zeros okay and uh, then uh, that means basically your data set is such that you have too many dimensions and uh, in those dimensions too many of them let us just say i was mentioning an example yesterday i will tell the same example today it is uh, you are, your data set is something like a web mining data set that is say you have got a collection of web pages. Let us just say some documents let us just say you have 100 documents you have 100 documents. Okay. So, in each document you have some sentences some words and some sentences let us just say the number of words per document is of the order of just give me some number let us just say 50 words are there of the order of 50 it may be 51 52 53 or it may be 47 48 49 or some of them may be even may be much more much smaller let us just say 50 so for each document on an average you have let us just say 50 words now you have 100 documents so so, 100 into 50 let us just say 5000 words and for the sake of convenience let us assume that all these 5000 words are different even if some of them are same the number of words will be quite a bit. Okay. So, let us just say you have 5000 words and all these words are different. Now, what we will do is that we represent a web page by a 5000 dimensional vector if word 1 is present you write 1 otherwise 0 if word 2 is present at that location write 1 otherwise 0. So, your vector is going to be a 5000 dimensional vector where you have zeros or 1s like that you have 100 documents that means 100 vectors but your number of dimensions is 5000 number of dimensions is 5000 but the number of such vectors is 100 now if you have to look at the corresponding variance covariance matrix to find principal components 
you are going to have some problems. If it is instead of 5000, in fact, if you look at web pages, you have too many words. The number of words may be in lakhs. Then your covariance matrix will be 1 lakh into 1 lakh, such a big matrix, right. So, but then most of the elements are zeros. If you have to describe one web page where you have hardly 100 or 250 words, 100, 150, 200, 250, let us just take 500 words, but then your number of words that you have taken is 1 lakh. You have 1 lakh words among which 500 are here, so the rest all of them are zeros. So, your data matrix is basically a sparse matrix. And uh, nowadays, many data sets are like this. And for these sort of data sets, if you have to do all these things, then you may have to develop some new methods. The reason is that whenever we do this sort of thing, we assume there is an inherent assumption that the number of points is much more than the number of dimensions. The number of data points is much more than the number of dimensions. Whereas, for many real life problems that may not be true. For many real life problems, the number of data points may be much less than the number of dimensions. I have mentioned for a web mining data set okay. and you have many, many other data sets, many data sets involving bioinformatics. You have cancer patients, you have many gene expression data sets, where again the number of dimensions is of the order of 2, 3, 4 thousand, but the number of points may be of the order of 100 or 150 or 200. So, these are some of the latest problems, where when you are trying to apply principal components, you may face some problems because of since the number of dimensions is much more than the number of data points, then uh, and uh, your computer may not be able to support finding a finding eigenvectors for a let us just say 5000 by 5000 matrix, your computer may not be able to support it, but for the same thing for a 100 by 100 matrix probably your computer can support it. So, sparse data and sparse matrices are occurring many times and in many applications in real life. So, there are some papers where somehow people are trying to find the principal components for when you have sparse matrices. There is one paper by Tipshirani on this regard in this regard I think that appeared in one of the statistics journals. Tipshirani is a famous person working in uh, machine learning and uh, I hope by now you know that many of these things are, we are calling it pattern recognition, some people are calling it data mining, some people are calling it machine learning and some people are calling it artificial intelligence. So, many of these things are actually occur in too many disciplines okay. and Tipshirani and a few such others statisticians they call themselves as machine learning people. So, they are working on this thing some papers are already published and uh, there are several problems related to principal components in very very high dimensional data sets, because your computer may not be able to support such high dimensional I mean finding Eigen values and Eigen value vectors for such high dimensional matrices. I am stopping it here. If you have any questions, please ask me.
no more questions okay fine thank you